I'm Cape Jewel, and this is Comic Smack. Your weekly, daily, all the time, anytime comic show where I give you your fix of everything you need to know from the world of comic books and superheroes. And on today's show, we're taking a closer look at Champions, issue number four. Can this young team of heroes stay together despite the adversity? Well, let's hop on in together and find out, shall we? Okay then, so picking up directly from where the last issue left off, our team's aircraft is going down. They were shot down by a mystery assailant, and now they're not sure if they're going to make it. It's at this moment right here, Cyclops actually steps up and takes the wheel, and this is... This is actually a genius piece of writing, because if you'll remember, the Summer Parents were actually pilots, so it makes sense that he knows how to fly. The Champions are far from any landmass, which means they have to bring it down in the water, and from here they have to get really, really creative. Viv and Nova do their best to try and reinforce the hull. Amadeus Cho is going to do his best to swim out front and pull everyone else behind him, and Cyclops, well, he puts his optic blast to use in another really creative way by blasting it behind him to create a rudder effect. Man, this this issue is just offering up so much great stuff with Cyclops. In fact, Miss Marvel starts to get, you know, a little jealous here because, you know, Cyclops is showing that maybe he would be a perfect leader for the team. Only, you know, Scott says, hey, I really like what you've been doing and everything, and this is your idea. I think it's cool that we can be in a mutant and an inhuman at a time when our races are at each other's throats. You and I are cool, though, and we understand each other. I like that. Now, eventually, our heroes do end up getting the answer of who exactly shot them down, and that turns out to be the Atlanteans. Yeah, the blue-skinned Namor people. Turns out the cheapo Amadeus Cho Hulk, instead of building a brand new aircraft for his team, the champions just sort of retrofitted an old American spy plane, and because of that, the Atlanteans assumed they were spying on them and as such shot them down. Lucky for our heroes, this is a small force, and as such, they only get taken captive and not killed. All in all, this is a pretty dire situation. The team is put into containment units, and if they try and escape, they'll simply just drown to death. It's in a moment like this, Miles Morales' Spider-Man actually shows himself to be the most level-headed of the crew, which is interesting because they also have an emotionless machine in Viv. Speaking of Viv, her captors seem to forget that as a synthesoid, she can actually phase through solid matter, and also being a machine means she doesn't need to breathe underwater. The champions decide their best bet to get out of this predicament is to hit the water recycling feature on the craft that they're on. They do this, which leads to a giant scuffle with the Atlanteans. It's a hard-fought battle. The Atlanteans are hardy people and have advanced weaponry, but in the end, our heroes are able to skulk away with their heads held high to fight another day. Some of them don't exactly like the fact that this kept them from another proper mission, but as Kamala puts it, hey, this was an adventure. Everything can't be a mission. Champions number four was yet another really entertaining story with this group of young heroes. I'm really digging the one-and-done feel that this book has going for it. There's just so much youthful exuberance and sense of adventure that's being exuded by this book. If I was a young reader or if I knew someone who wanted to get into comics, this is definitely a book I would try and start them with. Mark Wade also probably did more work rehabbing the character of Cyclops in just a few pages than the last, like, 30 X-Men stories have done. I like the idea that he's actually being useful again and people like him for being him. And hey, while we're on the subject of Wade, the ultimate moral of this story that not everything can be a mission, sometimes it's just an adventure, I think that speaks very much to Mark Wade's style of writing. Overall, I would feel comfortable giving this one another 8 out of 10. Very consistent in its quality. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching my newest video. I hope you enjoyed it, and while you're here, why not check out another video I have on offer? Or maybe if you're feeling in a support of mood you want to like or subscribe. And if you want to support the creation of more videos just like this one, then please, by all means, check out the Cape Joel Patreon. A little bit goes a very long way, and I will see you all next time.